welcome to the Oasis. My name's Mike and today we're here and we're going to be talking about Winlands 2 and we're going to be talking about Winlands 2 with the developers of the game. They're the best people to talk about it and it's going to be Nick Pittam and John Hibbins from the SciTech team. So welcome guys. Thank you for joining me today. This must be an incredibly exciting time for you both right now because you're kind of in this period before release but the game is finished and it's just waiting for release now. So the game is going to be launching next week, Wednesday the 12th of September on Oculus Rift. So how do you feel right now that the game is done and you've just got to wait for a release now? It's great. Yeah, it's really exciting. I mean, it's like two and a half years, wow. would, would you say, John? Almost two three. Years. Almost yeah, three years. And that's... I, think, I think actively hands-on probably two and a half, but you know, we've been planning it for nearly three. And you, you spend most of that in your little bubble where it's like a you know, a dozen or so people who, who are trying at any one time. And we, of course, have been to shows and we've shown people. Uh, but to finally get it out to the world with everything, showing every part of it and it being finished, that's that's really exciting. Just wanting to see what people's reactions are. Just wanting to know that something you've spent a long time on and you've thought about very carefully and you've, you, you've tried to make something that people will enjoy, that they, they actually do. What do you guys actually do now then? Like, is it is it business as usual for you guys or do you have a little break? Do you have a little holiday with the rest of the team or how, do, how does that work? Well, it's incredibly busy right now, honestly, Mike. Um, speaking to people like yourselves, uh, yeah. but, um, you know, just organizing press releases, responding to questions and just, yeah, all of the launch hype. And actually there's a whole marketing side to that where we've got to get assets ready and, you know, just be prepared. So we're probably busy right now, but yeah, I think um, we, you know, we're we're not going to stop. We're still doing other things. We've we've got stuff in the pipelines, and yeah. uh, but you know, maybe a little holiday this time. <laughs> so it's not like you just finish the game. It's like everyone puts their feet up and just wait, uh, wait, wait well, for launch. Winlands, we sort of did finish Winlands one and moved on to Winlands two. We knew we were doing that, and of course, um, Winlands one was a complete game, and we shipped it on the PlayStation. Eventually, you know, all the platforms, including the Microsoft platform. Um, but we, we, you know, we wanted to do something bigger, and it really wasn't within the scope of Winlands one. Winlands one needed some major engineering changes. You know, it would need a lot. Of, I, I just don't think. We could have retrofitted uh, things like um, multiplayer and you know adding titans it you know it just it just was a clear you know this is shippable let's ship it and of course it was hugely successful it hum humbly successful for us we, we're really proud of what we did with winlands um but you know it was time to to do winlands too really yeah, so, and, and the Win Winlands originally, you know, it was like a, it came out the time that Oculus Touch came out. Uh, it was also a, a pancake game, so you could play it on a, a normal PC as well without a VR headset. But that's not the case this time around, right? You, you, Winlands 2 is going to be exclusive to VR, is that right? Yep, it's uh, it's sort of what we set out with. I think we would have happily um, made, uh, I think because Winlands came out pancake first, didn't it, John? Am I, am I getting oh, that in okay. going back? An awful long time now, because yeah, um, we were obviously at Winlands was before it, uh, we met Ilya, and, and obviously we joined forces with Ilya and Simo working on this game. Before then, it was uh, it was actually one of the first VR jams, so it was yeah. like a, a DK one VR jam. So it would right. be unfair that it was like pancake game from day one because it definitely wasn't. It was just actually no. bought out of a VR jam, um, and it was more parkour. Actually, the hooks came slightly later. Uh, and but yeah, when we came to launch, we wanted some. You know, we did keep the two D support that mostly was used for dev. You know, we were. It's hard. It was hard to on and off a DK one, and then mm. even DK two was a difficult piece of kit to deal with, and it was changing constantly. You know, the SDK was changing constantly. There was constantly new developments and technology coming out, uh, right through to the prototype kits for DK. Uh, you know, CV one. And so we were always able to play it as non-VR. So it sort of was a no-brainer to le release it with with non-VR as well. Right. Uh, but you know, in retrospect, uh, given that Six Degrees Freedom came out along the line and Vive was released, and we were one of the early people to release a Vive version of Winlands, and and um, yeah, uh, we you know it was an incredible journey. But you know, 
we had a lot on just launching. Um, yeah. if, you think, if you think about that lineup, we launched on Steam VR first uh, because Oculus didn't have a store. Right. You know, it was the only place you could get. <laughs> the only place you could get <laughs> Oculus Rift games was on Steam, you know, right. uh, because there, there was no store. But we were a launch title for Oculus CV1 when it went live, and then obviously we were a launch title for the Vive as well. And then we were also launched for a title for PSVR. You know, we we're in that opening week of PSVR, so we're constantly been chasing that technology thing. But by the time we've got to Inlands 2, you know, all these SDKs settled. Obviously, uh, everything is now carefully patched and, you know, doesn't radically change. TRCs, I mean, I can tell you the difference between launching day one on the PlayStation to launching now, or the same with Oculus, really, is, is a world of difference. You know, three years later, they've got proper proper certification processes or proper processes you go through to get to store. And it's, um, yeah, it's, it's harder in many ways but equally the quality of the product goes up so it's, it's a good thing to go through those processes yeah but yeah yeah so so like from winlands one you, you finished the game development and then was it straight away like yeah we want to do more of this or was it a case of like uh you, you know we're going to seek some funding first or we're going to think about some other projects or how, how did that sort of work out it was pretty much straight into Inlands 2, wasn't it? Awesome. We, we we had our thoughts on what would be good based upon feedback as well i mean we we, we knew what people oh, we, we were. We really listened, yeah. We yeah. really listened, didn't we? Specifically, we, like, what do people really like? What would what do people want to see? You know, there's a lot of um, references that people talk about, and that they they you know, I think Attack on Titan was a reference because obviously it's a, it's the same thing, and they'd be like, oh, wouldn't it be great if you had an Attack on Titan game that's just like this? And while we didn't obviously set out to make Attack on Titan the game, or well, or, or, or any kind of superhero game or whatever it was, we obviously took those took those thoughts and 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 was like, well, what, how can we turn that, take those ideas and bring them into to a game uh, in a way that makes sense and, and multiplayer as well. I think that was something that we we saw as like really natural because obviously people are doing time trials, they're doing they're doing racing through the game, and it, it's a very obvious move to then take that to multiplayer and i think you know oculus wanted multiplayer people wanted multiplayer that became a very obvious choice yeah um to because go like with. it the winlands 2 differs from the original in that you've got this multiplayer co-op experience but also combat's been added so combat wasn't a part of the original game right no it, no it was just it was just exploration and you, you yeah you've obviously doubled down on the exploration in winlands 2 but added these extra elements and the part when I first heard about it, about Winlands 2, when I tried it at Oculus Connect 4 last year, was the fact that it was co-op. Like, that was the thing that excited me more than anything else about the game. And then Yeah, having... we just, I, don't, I don't think we get the idea of, like, putting a whole bunch of people in a map and never seeing the other people. I mean, like, mm. VR social, right? So mm. it's like, it was a no-brainer, like, if we're going to do a... A, a, a multiplayer game it's like well we want people to be together and working as a team and, and like enjoying it with with strangers or friends and and it was yeah i mean we, we didn't want to do this sort of pvp or sports arena or you know all these other things that could have been done but yeah uh, we wanted to keep people socially connected and was that a design decision on day one that you kind of want this more of a co-op experience rather than going down the pvp route like you said yeah yeah, yeah i think yeah. so it made it didn't really we didn't want to make a, a, a an arena fighting type game. That was never really uh, a, a plan um, for the core game. And of course, the core game took up, you know, the first, 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 just purely what what is the core experience of playing this multiplayer? Uh, and that was there from the start. Everything was developed with multiplayer in mind. Um, yeah. And uh, and yeah, that that was that was our driving force for a very long time, ensuring awesome. that that worked really well. Yeah, and and in terms of like the co-op experience, you can you can play the whole game cooperatively with friends, right? And uh, from what I understand, the enemies actually scale with difficulty based on how many players you've got playing the game, which is really cool. Um, and something I, I noticed in the trailer was that you had this great big boss, but it had different coloured targets on it so is that based on a specific player so it's not like one player can just carry the whole team oh no one player can absolutely carry the whole team right okay okay it's more like yeah so if it's if one person is playing then there are an amount of 
hits that you'll get on the shield, if more people are playing than on, on the, the Titan, the monster, the big robot shield, if more people are playing, then you require more hits. And that well, just came through playtesting. Yeah, so um, it's, it's a, it is color coded. It like goes from, you get used to it really quickly. It like goes from blue to orange to red, basically. Right. But the red's always the last. Oh, right. um, I see. That's how many hits you it, require to yeah, get rid of the shield. I see, I see. Yeah. It, you know, tr we tried all sorts, and, and um, this color scheme actually is really, really clear, and it, 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 once you've played it once, really, you've got it. And it works. So how, how do people actually link up to play the game multiplayer? Um, is it through the Oculus Friend system, or do you just like link up randomly through multiplayer matches that are open? Either. Okay. Um, I, 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 both. So you can start private matches and invite your friends as normal. Um, we're very. Whenever we do a platform, we integrate as closely to that platform as possible to make it as easy as possible. Because majority, of, uh, I think it's easy to think, well, multiplayer can be across every platform, and uh, but actually, your friends list is typically tied to a platform. So you know, how do you find your friend on a different platform when you're in it? You know, it's, it's but we tie as close as we can to that platform for invites and and leaderboards and. And, um, you know achievements and uh, you know, uh, all the lobbies and stuff but yeah you can absolutely jump in there and open up a public game and people will just drop in and out or, just, um, or you can do it privately awesome, and awesome. Do or, yeah. yeah and you mentioned leaderboards so there is although it's it's cooperative there is competitive elements as well and that's through racing is it is that right Right. Yeah, so, there's two yeah. two brands of of multiplayer thing. There's there's racing, which is exactly what you would imagine. You you go through checkpoints all the way to a, a final goal. We have a number of different courses um, set in the actual main world maps. It's just sections of that that you race through. And then there's another one which is a a a a, a challenge where you have to collect a number of these orb type objects within certain amount of time so there's 10 spread around and it's whoever can get collect them all the quickest and get to the um the goal the awesome. end the quickest awesome and, and is it just a case of like the leaderboards is the goal or do you get other unlockables or rewards for completing these challenges oh you definitely get rewards if you complete them under so i think there's a whole bunch of achievements tied to that uh, right. if you complete them under a certain amount of time you'll get a free hook and yeah there's lots of rewards um, but you can play those with other people obviously that's where it shines it's like four of you just jump in there and you're racing against each other so you can yeah. race again and again and again do different maps and yeah um but yeah if you're on your own uh, racing against your friends is still possible through the leaderboards because all your friends tie Teams are logged on the leaderboard. It's very competitive. It's yeah. uh, we did have leaderboards in Midlands One for doing the challenge maps, and and yeah, the the top group is incredibly competitive space to be. But uh, you know, sure. even competing against your friends is good fun. I'm sure because there's there's a whole scene of people out there now that are like uh, speed running games in VR now, and I'm sure you know this is a game that they're going to just gonna love because it kind of encourages that kind of speed running mentality of just getting through very quick. Um, so that's going to be really interesting to see after the game releases these kind of people adopting that and playing it that way. Um, but exploration is like a huge part of Winlands, and sort of how have you uh, made that sort of interesting in Winlands 2 like are, are there things that you can find collectibles that kind of thing easter eggs that people can look for over to you sure. oh okay oh, well, I, <laughs> yes yes and yes right. you're, you're in it for instance so, oh okay uh, good luck finding your own tag in the game okay. um, but I'll, yeah I'll we've, 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 hidden, <laughs> we've hidden a whole bunch of like what be easter eggs so there's there's fun things to find and some of them are uh, like really hard to find good luck um but really fun when you do find them uh and but uh, as the general uh one of the achievements is collecting uh, 100 and uh, i think it's 120 yes 40 per per zone uh so there's 120 um tablets spread around the world right. um so for those that, that like that achievement hunting um they, they're hidden yeah, everywhere and anywhere. But okay. uh, yeah, fun to find and quite an adventure for the end game, I suppose. Yeah, I'm intrigued. Uh, you know, don't spoil it, obviously. And I'm sure you wouldn't tell me anyway, but I'm intrigued what you get after collecting those 120 times. Uh, well, uh, but it would be fair to say that most things unlock a new hook because for multiplayer, yeah. having different colors and different, you know, different styles of hooks, a lot of things unlock hooks. Cool, cool. Okay. So, so yeah. Um, so a lot of the uh, the feedback and sort of some sort of people are a little bit worried about is like the movement in the game because it looks super intense, but actually I found the game 
way more comfortable to play than the original game. Like, I, I, I remember trying the original game before I kind of developed my VR legs, and I struggled with it a little bit at first. And a lot of people used the original game to kind of get used to that sort of locomotion feeling in VR. But I have to say, having played the sequel uh, through, like, demos, uh, EGX, and, and, and things like that, it's super comfortable to play. And, and also, I noticed whilst doing demos there, that people that have brand new to VR, maybe it's the first ever experience, have tried Winlands 2 and they don't seem to have any issues with the movement. So what sort of wizardry did you uh, did you include in the game to make that possible? Well, the, the actual player controller has been completely overhauled. Obviously, we started with the original as a starting point, but massively, massively overhauled the way the movement works, the way when you land on a, on a surface, the way that reacts to you, the way you, you literally you move around so the, just the general process of hooking through the world and that movement, that's all been overhauled and in various technical to like just comfort ways. But then we've also, we do a lot with, you know, just adding a lot of comfort modes. So just by default, there are a number of comfort options that are turned on mm. with a, like a load of them, a whole whole mess of them included in the, uh, the menu. So you can just turn on cages and vignettes and all kinds of stuff. And, and we've, I think we've, we've tried to do as, as much as possible to add every single uh, locomotion and comfort option, you know, other than teleport, that might, that might defeat the point of the game. Sure. But <laughs> sure. Other than that, we've added, you know, absolutely everything. And, yeah, uh, we had but, to double yeah. down, really. I mean, everybody's different, right? Mm. So, um, but our out of the box is pretty good. And we've designed for stuff as well. There's, there's uh, some things that people didn't like in, in Winman's One that we've actually addressed. So people didn't like the iciness, which was really all about the parkour. But we've, we've, um, we've still got parkour in the game, but much less. It's not as focused on parkour. It's more focused on the swinging because right. the message was clear: people want to swing, right? So we needed to get to focus on that, and that's, that's that turned out really well. Um, there are still like sections i'm sure you've been through them by now that, that are a little bit knee wobbly and <laughs> you have to take your time on but the you know majority of the game is now like that and also it's room scale now so if yeah. you if you can plug together enough of a space uh you know you can walk around a very giant hyde park or something and play the entire game yeah. it's huge the game it's way bigger than winlands um we've managed to uh, you know we've managed to build this incredibly large world in vr that that's probably what we're one of the things certainly that we're most proud of it's like a massive space to be in and, yeah. and that um and actually the bosses are quite rare you know a lot of the time you it takes you a while to get to the next boss yeah and nick mentioned about um settings and one thing i've noticed like you said there are so many settings in this game that you can adjust and and not only just for, for comfort but also like graphical settings also settings for people with um that are colorblind which i was really surprised to see as well H how did that feature end up getting implemented into the game dgx uh, that particular one. yeah right um yeah just some of the first time we'd come across a colorblind person really well yeah. actually it was two 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 brothers i think both colorblind yeah um and said uh, you know came and talked to me afterwards and just told me about the colorblind stuff so yeah no we went back and, and did what we could to address it i think we like to do that i think we really love to listen mm. to people um and and take on board what they're saying and some things that seem small uh, in the scope or seem like minor things are actually quite big to a lot of people so we try and wherever possible if somebody's got something that will help them yeah. um, it's it, even things like the standard seated is great for people with wheelchairs so there's some adjustments in there for them and uh, uh, yeah anything on the accessibility side we can do we normally do um, but generally for comfort now even things like you know we had a default snap turn now you can adjust that to whatever angle that you like and you know it's just yeah and actually on that note we're just so you know um happy with how the ui systems come out the mm, ux ui switches yeah they, yeah they work so well little toggle switches yeah we, we spent a lot of time on that we're not fans so i'm definitely not a fan and, and uh of the non uh, you know laser pointers and flat screens and sliders and because they're just difficult and mm. yeah you know, they're not intuitive and not quick to use in vr so we spent a lot of time on that UI system and, and making it work in multiplayer so you can see when people are using their panel um, and just trying to make everything like uh, from a user experience a few clicks away and super simple to understand. And, and actually we think we've done some really interesting, you know, if you're, if you're a dev out there, you should probably spend some time looking at that because there's some interesting mm. stuff. And I'd like to see where other people take it because it's, um, 
yeah. it's such an interesting thing and it's interesting you mentioned sort of like you know picking devs like looking at other vr games and picking nice bits out and sort of thinking oh that's a, a really good way because vr is such a new medium right now that you know we're all trying to sort of learn from each other in terms of what works and what doesn't was there any sort of vr games that you sort of tend to play during development or is it a case of like you play non-vr games when you sort of have downtime or you don't play any games at all or <laughs> i'd be intrigued to know vr all the way and i'm sure it's the same for nick well, we yeah, obviously play as, 2D. as much as possible. Um, yeah. Although I like the Switch. Been playing playing yeah. a lot of the Switch. Yeah. Um, Any yeah. favorites? Any favorites you want to call out on the Switch that you're playing? Dead Cells recently. Oh, good game. I that a lot. Good game. Good game. Yeah. yeah. What about What about you, John? Any? any well, I play. I play sort of. No, I'm a big gamer. I love playing games. Yeah. Um, I do do a lot of VR. Um, you know, I am. <laughs> I've got quite a lot of high scores in Beat Saber on, on the expert mode and <laughs> challenge there. I like I like the um, I like all VR. I mean, I do, I do play as many games as possible can. Yeah. Um, and I think yeah, this anything you can learn from other people is a great thing, and, and we want to share with other people as well. But yeah. it, it's um, yeah, I'm playing. The, is it Two Point Hospital? That's a flat game. So oh right, yeah, yeah. Of, that looks like one fun. of the latest ones I'm playing. Yeah, yeah I'm not very far through because I'm quite busy with doing that too but um you know that if i get some downtime that's a good game to play so one uh, one thing i heard about your development process was that you actually used to like to meet up in game and talk about the game in the game is that right <laughs> yeah yes. it made, it's actually the we all of our meetings tend to start there now and uh and then if we need to we'll we'll come off and we'll we'll go on skype or something that's and then yeah. and talk yeah. outside but it makes a lot of sense because you can obviously be talking about a bit of the world or a boss or, or whatever it is it's, it's obviously better just to go up to it that's so cool and interact with it yeah, yeah, and, yeah and... it's too big it's too small I mean, there's, there's a particular moment that stands out to me nick when we we're talking about sizes of bosses where we've got this we just had this scene and we had the same boss at many different sizes <laughs> and we were about to, we were about to fly around here and look and we're all in game chatting and talking about sizes and things it's just yeah i mean it just yeah, developing VR from within VR is a very cool thing and because we've got our own tech stack with its own voice over IP and, and tools in there, we've actually got things like we can turn a god mode on in dev where we can fly and we've got laser pointers and things and uh, it will tell us distances between objects and all sorts of other things and we can move bushes around and all sorts in multiplayer. And those things help us, to, well it accelerates dev because we can create and test ideas very, mm. very quickly but also it's a very emotive way of doing it. We're quite a... Um, a spread out group you know we're not right. all in a single office or anything we're spread all over the world we've got people in australia finland uh out, out, we have people work from america and you know so we're quite spread out and that works really well if you if you're in a virtual environment building games because it doesn't matter where you are you just as far as as far as you're concerned you stood opposite that person that's awesome that's so awesome to hear so the game is releasing uh, next week uh, wednesday the 12th and it's going to be on oculus uh, for oculus rift um it's also coming to steam and psvr in the future right so it's kind of got a small exclusive window for oculus what, what was the sort of reasoning uh, behind that uh, it's purely because um they offered to fund the game to an amount yeah. And that came with it uh, as as part of their standard sort of deal with that sort of financing, a, a, a small exclusivity window. Yeah, um, and, and, and that's, that's understandable, right? You know, if they're if they're funding the game, and Oculus are funding a lot of games. Yeah. Um, you well, know, it's, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, ideally, it's we would be out on every platform day one, yeah, and we'd yeah. love to. But we wouldn't if we didn't have that funding. We wouldn't have the game we have now. I mean, it just wouldn't we'd have some other game or something yeah. well, I, actually i think it would it go i would go as far as it might not exist yeah yeah um oculus didn't pay for all of it we paid for more than oculus did so that that gives you how how our bet on the table is you know yeah. and it, it's 10 times more their investment at winlands was you know we've had yeah. to have a much bigger team to make it it's a much more complicated product um and you know if they hadn't have helped i don't think we would have taken that level of risk in this market mm. we've been very lucky with winlands one but we, you can't forecast the future and you know it actually tears us all it makes us so sad that we've done that decision but we we did it in the knowledge that but, you know, it's not forever. It's a very yeah. you know, short as, as we're going to make yeah. it as short as possible. You know, the yeah. day, I, I, I mean, hand on heart, if we can do it this year, we will. You know, we'll do everything we can to make it happen. Um, but the, you know, the fact is, it, it, it's it's a really tough decision for any um, 
indie dev to yeah. do that type of thing. But for us, it was like, well, actually, this is going to help us get it not only fund some of it, but it help it get made at all. Because I think the decision on the opposite side is, would you have invested, you know, a lot of money yourself, hundreds of thousands of pounds? Uh, on an unknown future market in in a space where you're not quite sure whether people will like the sequel and and with the risk that the risk we would have had to take on that would have been probably too big for us mm. as a tiny little indie company so we probably just wouldn't have done it um mm. so somebody i think people underestimate the costs of things and it's yeah. nice to talk about that for a minute you know um it costs millions of pounds to make some games yeah. you know things things like marvel and and uh, I, I mean there is a classic example you know it would have cost many millions of pounds to make eve valkyrie right a team of nearly 100 or 25 or whatever their team was right it would have cost a lot of money right uh and you know, without that funding, they can't make VR games, and they're no. not here today making VR games. So I, th I honestly think Oculus are heroes in this, and it makes it a little bit sad that, that Valve aren't doing more to help. Um, mm. So Sony are. They're really helpful. Uh, they're funding titles, and they're helping get great content to market, and not everything's an exclusive. You've got things like Moss that are crossing platforms and, and um, mm. uh, other, other stuff, uh, and that's good. I'm glad to see that. Um, but, you know, without that help, I think the VR industry is would be at real risk of dying. Yeah. Um, without great content and um, you know people don't buy headsets people don't buy headsets then people don't you know and then you don't get people investing behind companies and and it all you know they're they're it's desperately need and it makes mm. it does make me sad it makes me personally sad we can't release on valve uh, vive day one because i would want to my absolute yeah. you know we were there day one but i think that's well, a, that, yeah sorry, sorry go for it yeah it's it's the other thing as well there's some some other benefits obviously a lot of games like moss um, they they bridge that barrier from from where they start off and and I don't think anyone immediately expected Moss to come along but mm. it did uh, and it goes the other way as well plenty of games go across to across to PSVR um, but the the benefit to whether it's Sony or Oculus or whoever funding it is those studios are then in a much better position when it comes to whatever their next game is mm. to then make a better product so they've got more experience they've got you know better better contacts and links and all the, all those and, things that yeah, are even if, even if people go their own way all of that skill those people yeah. have spread to other companies right so it's it's a great thing they're doing but you know nobody wants to see any type of exclusivity i get that but, you know ultimately it's just where we are in the industry and it's like it sucks but um windlands 2 would not exist i don't i really don't think it would exist today I think if that's the, the, the key take of this is, you know, for people from the community need to understand that it's either you don't have a game or there's a small exclusivity window, but you will get to play it eventually, regardless of what platform you're on. And I think we all agree that we'd want the latter, you know, so it's, it was a great explanation as to why that's the case. And I'm sure that will put people's uh, sort of minds at rest. Um, so I've got a couple of questions from the community. Uh, I've got one question here from Timothy Johnson from Facebook. He says, hey, Mike, could you ask them how many hours of gameplay roughly it will take to complete the game? <laughs> Depends how good you are, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, the original one, we've got an, an example of the original one being played for 800 hours. So um, how long do you want to play it for? We made the game very, very repeatable, right? right. So it's not a one-off shot, you're done. Every quest... You've played some quests now, so things like rescue quests or things like the bosses are different. Every time you play them, they're unique to the save file. So you can actually play the game again, 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 and it will be different every time, and it will play different every time, and you'll be with different people, or you'll just have a different experience. Okay. Um, so that's good. But the the main game experience in our testing is, uh, anyway, it depends how good you are. If you've played Windlands 1, you'll probably crack it in four and a half, five hours, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, if you're really fast and sort of like, racing through it uh, we the uh, a really good comparison is Windlands one takes us half an hour to speed run right we can speed run it in half an hour i don't think we've come under two hours speed running in Windlands two mm. i fully expect people will work that out but mm. it's it's a bigger game um mm. but yeah it's yeah i mean it's hard to say until we've got those real figures honestly mike we haven't had it out out in that stats collecting yeah. you know show us how long it takes i think um, yeah, an average player who's just playing it without attempting to speed run it could <laughs> could hit five or six hours yeah oh no yeah. problem and if you start yeah. getting distracted going off and getting tablets and you know not focusing on progression it will be oh, six hour plus we're expecting six hour pluses then exactly and, and that's the that's the key of the game is uh, is exploration and, and and promoting the exploration 
And this exact question is, you know, a thing we debate a lot. You know, how long's worth the money? How long, you know, I mean, mm. is the hours the right number? Is it two hours? Is it, you know, it's a, it's a difficult one. And um, we, we, we did, we doubled down on end game content and replayability yeah. um, and tried to make the world richer rather than just making a longer game for the sake of a longer game. Uh, we could have put 10 extra quests that were the same as the ones you've just done in. We could sure. have put four of the bosses that were identical to the ones you've done, but with a new skin on. You know, we could have extended the game, but um, what we wanted to do was create every boss being unique. You know, you don't get repeated quests that are boring. Uh, we want, you know, you progress to different areas rather than re overusing re uh, areas you're in. So, yeah, it was, um, it's ended up about that time. And we're, we're happy that time. To, to excellent, continue. excellent. Um, so next question is from Hadstech from Discord, and he said, uh, "What feature was the most difficult to implement for Winlands 2? Multiplayer. <laughs> Multiplayer. <laughs> yeah. Because it's not really one feature; it's like an entire infrastructure. It's an incredibly complex undertaking. Not only purely just to have more than one person in the game, you got you got to be able to see each other. So obviously, there needs to be a whole avatar system." Uh, characters that you know animate and their their arms all like okay around and all that sort of stuff. There's got to be um, the way to join in multiplayer. There's got to be making sure the game's back. It just it it just add, adds the complexity. It cranks it. Up. Every every bullet needs to show real time and four other people's things. Every yeah. shield effect. Every you know it's just like everything is much more complicated. Testing is like goes from relatively simple to stupendously complex. Um, yeah, and we're very very proud of the multiplayer it's our own stack it's actually peer-to-peer -peer, just to answer that question for people um we're not in a position to host unlimited servers and sadly we're not facebook so we can't do, we don't have that that, uh, that capability within our pocket but the you know it's peer-to-peer -peer, so you know uh, it depends on the bandwidth of the of the people playing together but um you know because we've done our own low level networking we're really proud of that one it's really it's hard and i'm sure people will find any holes if there are any but, but we're, we're really really proud about that excellent and he's also got a second question uh, which i think is a, a good one as well it's uh, is there anything that you planned uh, but didn't make the final cut because it wasn't fun or it wasn't engaging or didn't quite work well as a feature i know the answer to this Big <laughs> does as well god okay climbing right climbing We've, uh, we've put we've we have made the hooks climbing now you can climb things uh but we plan to put in climbing and swinging between climbing points and it was just it just isn't us yeah. uh we hate it, to... it it was a bit of a strange pacing change to be going around the world and then you're like and it was just it was just yeah. not good and no matter how good and our level designers did all sorts of experiments and no matter you know whether it was monkey bars or whether it was swinging on roots or whether it was just fast climbing it just wasn't fun being against a wall with your face no. it just didn't feel yeah it just changed the game completely um so yeah that's definitely a feature that we thought we'd implement and with all best cases we we tried trod forwards with but you know, it was fairly quick. We just said, look, we're just not going to do this. It's just not a good mechanic for us. Yeah. Um, it it becomes it contrived ruined. as well because you, you, in, you obviously we got a game where you can swing quite high. You can get a lot of speed and movement behind you. And to get to a stage where you you you, you can't just swing past this, this wall of climbing, you, it's quite contrived. You basically yeah. would, would end up going, right, this is a climbing section. Let's slot it in here. Let's just clear everything out of the way so you can't cheat it. And and where can we make... It's just, it stops being a, a fun... And yeah. even with the climb anything, it just, no, no, it just wasn't for us at all. Yeah. It, um, it's really it, interesting to hear that, yeah. Because like you say, you know, from, from playing the game, you know, the most fun is just momentum you know that sense of yeah. speed that sense of momentum when you get that sort of right and you get into the rhythm of moving quickly through the levels and get into where you need to go it's so satisfying and then when you do miss something or you fall you just think i just need to be better at this game <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was my fault i missed it I just need like to be... when you fire that out okay, and you just see it go past it you think oh <laughs> yeah. I just want to have be better. The, have you got the move where you sort of like uh, swing yourself and get the momentum into the air and then fire with the arrow? Yeah. Yes, I've, I've totally got that. And and I was going to talk about that actually because that is one of the most satisfying things uh, to experience ah, in the it. game yeah. is when you, you swing from one point and then there's an enemy, you shoot your bow and then you swing on to the next one. And when you time that just right, 
it's like the best games in VR, like like Beat Saber, you know, makes you feel really cool, and you know, Super Hot makes you feel like a like a badass. You know, this kind of has that superhero Spider Man swinging vibe about it, which is kind of ironic because Spider Man's coming out. This <laughs> I'll tell you week. what, even talking about Spider Man, there's all those shots in in Avengers movies where Hawkeye he jumps yeah. off something. Like, poof, like with his bow and arrow, and there's times where you just you fling yourself off. You don't even know where the next handhold is, and you turn like literally behind you, and you shoot the arrows. And one of those that's a good balls. move when you're turning behind you, shoot behind yeah, you, yeah. you down something, then you look forwards. And yeah, no, we they, love that. That I mean, it is by design. We we honed that to a T. Yeah. yeah. It, but um, yeah, I mean, you can tell with the boss fights in there. Yeah, but it does add a lot. Actually, I was surprised how much the bow had added to the windlands mechanic it was a perfect it has become the perfect complement to the yeah. swinging mechanic yeah it works incredibly well and to liken it to like a movie character it, it's like legolas you know when legolas is doing those really cool <laughs> like bow moves in in lord of the rings it kind of makes you feel like that which is super awesome so uh sort of final question before we wrap this one up then um now that Win windlands 2 is sort of done and is coming out next week. Uh, what sort of is on the horizon for SciTech? Uh, you know, have you got any other VR projects you're working on, or maybe you're looking to make something for Santa Cruz, or is there anything that you can tell us about the? I thought you were going to say Santa Claus, then. I thought. <laughs> well, it, 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 Christmas it, it would be like Santa's, <laughs> Santa's special present for us all that maybe Winlands Two is coming to Santa Cruz or something like that. But who knows? Well, I think that'd be quite a challenge to squeeze in. Somebody said that the other day. I think. Um, yeah, we. I mean, in all honesty. With that. with what Santa Cruz and uh, it's it's a different class of hardware and in all honesty the game that Windlands Two is uh, with the scale of the world um, technically I don't think it would be possible the game that it is to fit that into that class of hardware. Right. It's just technically unless i mean there would have to be some significant compromises right. made to a significant number of areas it, now the most not... the most difficult is how many polygons we've got on screen yeah yeah, yeah 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 i can't say how many the polygons are on the santa cruz but that that it's just less yeah. than a pc 1080 of can course. do yeah uh, and you know we're, we're entering 2080 so now I mean, you, it's funny because you mentioned earlier all the extra options in video, so you can actually go a bit mad. I mean, you mm. can go way beyond 1080, and that was all in prep, really, for the 2080, so just literally a week away or whatever, so that people can actually start to test the ramping up. And, well, if, if I crazy. sell my kidney on the black market and get one, then I'll make sure I crank up all the settings <laughs> oh. and try it out. So, yeah. so, so Santa Cruz is maybe off the cards, but what about any other sort of future projects? Have you got stuff in mind that you're going to be setting up for, or are you going to be just looking at sort of post-launch support for mm. Winlands 2 for the time being? Uh, do you know what? I, I love Nick. Nick and I... Um... I've really, you know, over the last five, six years, haven't we really matured in terms of working together and doing yeah. stuff? Yeah, it's, um, it's good. And, you know, we're friendlier than we've ever been. <laughs> and we're really good buddies. <laughs> and, <laughs> yes, we're going to do other stuff. It's cool. just you know, the scale of that, what we can do. You know, a large part of that depends on Winlands 2. You know, if Winlands 2 does really, really well, <laughs> <laughs> then, of course, we can use that success to make something new and uh, do something that, and carry on. And that, that's it's as simple as that in VR right now. Every single, I want to thank anybody out there that buys uh, Winlands 2 because every single penny, you know, yeah. goes in for, you know, us living our dream, really, doing VR every day because we, we do love doing this. And, and uh, yeah, we'd love to carry on doing stuff. Awesome. Well, there you have it. You know, Winlands 2 is up for pre-order now. It's coming out next week on Wednesday, the 12th of September. Uh, I'm really excited about it, especially playing it co-op with friends. Uh, I really appreciate you guys taking time out to uh, get involved in this. You know, it's, it's really interesting, I think, you know, for the community to hear about what it's like developing games and some of the challenges and also some of the rationale behind some of the decisions you made. I think it's really important that they, they know that. Uh, so I really appreciate you taking time out to talk about it. And uh, yeah, I'm really My looking forward to, uh, to Winlands 2. It's awesome. So uh, I hope you guys and girls enjoyed this dev interview. If you did, please leave a like on the video. Uh, make sure you're subscribed for all my future content. And as always, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.